Here's an example of the concepts of conditional probability and independence. And what I'm doing is I'm taking some data from way back in chapter three, when we were talking about categorical variables, um, and I'm turning it into a probability problem, because all of those can be turned into probability problems. It's very useful. So this was data for uh, acceptances from a, for a magnet school, um, categorized by accepted, waitlisted, and turned away and also uh, by whether the applicant was black or Hispanic, Asian, or white. And this is the typical kind of contingency table we see. So one thing that to, it's to note is when we look at this kind of table, it's always uh, supposed to be implied that these, like accepted, waitlisted, turned away, are exclusive, cat mutually exclusive categories. Or in other words, they're disjoint. And you can check that by making sure that the column, the row sums, add to the advertised total, because otherwise there'd be an overlap. Similarly, the rows should be disjoint as well. So all of these are little disjoint boxes. What you can think of it, you can think of it as um, as being a Venn diagram with nine little chambers that don't overlap at all. So there's waitlisted black and Hispanic, there's accepted and white. All of these guys are non-overlapping chambers in this Venn diagram. And then the totals give you extra information about if you group these three parts of the Venn diagram together, or if you group these three parts, what do you get? If you group them all, of course, you get the total. So let's answer some questions. What's the probability that a random student is accepted? Is this an absolute or conditional probability? OK. So just any random student, that's going to be not a conditional probability. We're not restricting the sample space. We're not talking, we're not giving you any infra other information than it's just a random student in the whole pool. Okay, so that's going to be uh, all the accepted students, that's 931 over 1755. So notice that to do an absolute probability, not a conditional probability, we're looking at the marginal total over the grand total. Okay, so it's either a column or a row total over the grand total. Okay, so that's uh, not a conditional probability. It's an absolute probability. Um, the the book I don't I can't remember if they use I don't think they use this terminology, but I just want to use it as the opposite of conditional probability. Okay, what's the probability that a random student is black or Hispanic? Okay, again, it's out of all random students, it's not a conditional probability yet. We're not giving any extra information. We're looking at the total pool. Another way to say it is we're not re restricting the sample space to be only a subset of the total sample space. So the denominator is still 1755. And it's just the number of black or Hispanic students. OK. Oh, and let me calculate this. Let's see. That's going to be, and of course, it's going to put it in the wrong place, 53%. OK. This is going to be 29.5%. OK. So, so far, hopefully pretty simple. Now, what's the probability that a black or Hispanic student is accepted? Is this an absolute or conditional probability? Now, let's read it carefully. We're given that the student falls into the black Hispanic category. And then we're looking in that, given that information, we're looking at the probability that they're accepted. So this is definitely a conditional probability. We're not looking at the full pool for the denominator. And we're going to be looking only at the black Hispanic students. That's 517 total. Oops, sorry, that's the denominator. And the numerator is, do we just look among the black Hispanic students? The rest of it is gone for right now. It's erased. We don't care about it. We're in a smaller universe here. And we just look at the accepted out of that, 485. And for a percentage, that's going to be 93.8%. OK. So now what about what's the probability that a white suit student is accepted? Is this an absolute or conditional probability? OK. So again. We are looking at a smaller pool, just the group of students that are uh, classified as white students. And we're looking, given that uh, probability, given that condition, what's the probability that they're accepted? So this is another conditional probability. We're only looking at the pool of white students. Let's go back up here. The white students, there's 946 applying, and 336 were accepted. Uh, I keep putting it in the wrong place. See, I'm doing the denominator first because that's sort of the, the more basic thing. That, that's what makes it a conditional probability when we get it off a table like this. And then I pulled in the denominator. OK, and so that's going to be 35%. Or let's say, let's do one more decimal place, 35.5%. OK, so let's look at this. So this, this is going to be one of the crucial things that we're going to ask. 
does being black or Hispanic make it more likely to get accepted to this magnet school? And what two numbers are you comparing to conclude this? I claim that we could compare two numbers. In fact, there's a couple of ways we can compare two numbers to show very quantitatively um, the answer to this question. Okay. So if we look at the numbers here, if we look at the numbers that we've, we've done here, hopefully you can get some idea of your own opinion of what, whether this is true or not, this yes or no question. Does being black or Hispanic make it more likely to get accepted? Okay. Well, if you are a random student, the probability you're going to get accepted is 53%, a little over half. So they accept about a little over half of their students. But if I tell you that the student I'm thinking of is, falls in the black or Hispanic category, then in fact, the likelihood that they got accepted was 93.8%. Notice the, the comparison here. It's the comparison of the um, accepted out of the total, this number or this number, that's an absolute probability, versus a, a conditional probability of accepted out of the black and Hispanic. Okay, so let's look at this. It is the probability of um, that you're accepted given that you're in the black Hispanic category was much greater than the probability simply of being accepted. So we're comparing, let me put a little space in here. Okay. Um, I don't need, uh, that's going to make it prettier. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at an absolute probability. This is the easiest way in this kind of setting to look at the um, influence of one event on another and look at questions of independence. We're looking at the probability that you could get accepted not knowing anything about the student in question versus the probability that they're going to get accepted given that they're black and Hispanic. So we're comparing an absolute probability with a conditional probability. Okay, so here's the more precise way of saying question, question D. Question D was in, intentionally avoiding a technical word um, just to hope, hopefully to get you thinking about it in a fairly low-tech manner. But now I'm suggesting there is actually a very precise quantitative way to answer this question. And in fact, there's a quantitative way to talk about it. It's the concept of independence. Okay, So because knowing that they're black and Hispanic gave you a much different pro uh, judgment of the probability that they'll be accepted, that's saying that these aren't independent. Knowing this information gives you a huge amount of information about changing your uh, estimate of the probability of this event, the student was accepted. Okay, So no, they are not independent because these guys are different. Okay, And whether it's bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter. It's because they're not equal. Okay, So that's going to be a very precise way of saying when two events are independent. It's when the conditional probability is the same as the unconditional or absolute probability. Okay, So let's look at how this inter interacts with some of the stuff we learned before. We learned that there's what's what I'm going to call the simple multiplication rule. In chapter 14, they just call it the multiplication rule. And it would be looking at the probability of an and condition. So that would be the probability that a random student, so now this is a totally random student out of, of the whole pool again. But we're going to ask for two conditions to be satisfied. That they're black and Hispanic and, and I'm going to write that with an intersection, the set theory notation, um, and that they're accepted. Okay, So that's a different question. It's related, but it's a different question from like this conditional probability. That says, I'm sure that they're black and Hispanic. I actually reduce the pool. I reduce the denominator, and I look at the probability that they're accepted. Here, I'm not looking at this conditional thing. There's not this vertical bar for the conditional probability. I'm looking among all the students, all the 1755, what's the probability that they're in this box, the black, Hispanic, and accepted category? Okay, well, that's 485 over 1755. So just di calculating it directly, that's 485 over 1755. Okay, and the question is, is that equal to the product of the accepted percentage and the black Hispanic percentage. Okay, That would be the simple multiplication rule. Well, let's see. Let's get the numerical value for this. That's 27.6%. So out of the entire pool, everybody applying, the probability that they are both black and Hispanic and accepted is a little over a quarter. Okay, Whereas the probability of black and Hispanic times the probability of accepted, okay, that is 
um, 0.53 times 0.295. Okay, and that is going to be 15.6%. Much, much different. Okay, so the answer is absolutely no. No, and this should hopefully should have been clear if you read chapter 14 clearly, uh, carefully. We can't use the simple multiplication rule. And it's because they're not independent. The events are not independent. Okay. But what chapter 15 introduces is the general multiplication rule. Okay. The general multiplication rule says that we can do this with conditional probabilities. Okay. We're going to look at the probability that someone is black or Hispanic. Okay. And then let's multiply that by the conditional probability. that given that they're black and Hispanic, that they get accepted. Okay, and let's work through the details, not just calculating percents, but I'm going to show you actually the calculation with uh, the numerators and denominators. But let's think about it. I'm looking at, um, I'm saying out of all the students, what's the proportion that are black and Hispanic? And then out of that group, what's the proportion that's accepted? If I multiply those proportions, hopefully I should actually get the proportion that's both black and Hispanic and accepted. And so let's look what happens. Black and Hispanic was um, 517 over 1755. That's 517 over 1755 times, and what was the this one? Accepted given black Hispanic, uh, that's this guy. I should have put it, let's see, that's right here. Okay, that's 485 out of 517. And notice what happens to those 517s. They cancel. Just exactly set up so that those cancel. Okay. And that is indeed the 27.6%. That is equal to the probability of both. Let me copy it. Okay. So all we're doing is pretty simple proportions, really. There's a lot of fancy terminology here, but it's pretty simple proportions. You look at all of the students, you look at what f uh, proportion fit into one category, and then you say, of that category, what's the number that fit into both? Of the, of the categories you're interested in, black and Hispanic and accepted. These guys cancel, and you just get the proportion out of the total that fit into both black and Hispanic and accepted. Okay, So that's the general multiplication rule. You can get an and by looking at just one of the factors separately, and then you look at the, the, prob the conditional probability of the second factor given the first is true. And that's going to be a very, very useful rule for us.